afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Mark McAllister, a senior partner for Holborn here in Cape Town in Africa. Um, I've been working for a number of years uh, in the South African and, and wider African market to help provide solutions for not only expats, but South African nationals uh, looking to diversify their investment base um, and in particular being instrumental in de delivering the latest and best in primary currency investment property solutions around uh, UK, Europe and the USA. Um, I just want to uh, thank uh, my panelist, Luke, for, for joining. I'll introduce him in uh, a little bit. Uh, there is a Q&A at the end, um, and that's a section for uh, any questions you've got. So feel free to ask any questions as we go, and we'll do our best to answer them towards the end. A um, little bit about us before we get started. Um, so Holborn has been around uh, for over 20 years. Uh, we're still a uh, family business. Um, and therefore the second largest independently owned IFA globally. Uh, how big now? Well, nearly assets under management of 3 billion US dollars, uh, so a significant concern, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and we have 18 offices across the world uh, managing in excess of 20,000 clients. Um, what are the reasons why people choose to do business with Holborn? Well, firstly, um, let's talk about the size. The, the size is important. It allows us to bring the latest and best investments to uh, market and to you as potential clients. And the reason being is because we have scale in the marketplace. Uh, we'll give you exclusive access to funds and solutions such as this yield investing option that we're going to talk about today um, that simply aren't that easy to find as a retail investor. So we'll probably provide you guidance in that regard. Um, we're completely independent, okay? So what that means is that we're not beholden to, to one fund or, or one brand. Uh, you won't see us uh, re recommending just one solution. Uh, we've got whole of market independent, uh, independent, sorry, which is something that I love. Service though, really, I think is the big reason why people utilize Holborn and, uh, and keep coming back. I'm very pleased to say that uh, I've never lost a client and I don't plan on doing so anytime soon. Um, and here's just a selection of some of the awards that we've won over the years. Um, and in particular, in the last two years, we've won uh, six uh, awards at the most recent industry Oscars, as we call them, investment, International Investment Awards, and uh, eight the year before. So uh, very, very proud of that. Um, fourth point that's very uh, important to consider is you know the qualifications that we hold very dear at Holborn um, so I'm a chartered institute of securities investment uh, level four qualified advisor so qualified to provide advice on UK solutions um, but also uh, recognized qualifications here in South Africa um, so it's something we hold very very dear um, and constantly pushing our teams uh, to develop their qualifications as, as their time in the industry goes on. Um, and lastly, safety and security. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today with this fantastic option um, from the team here. Um, and it's about making sure that we only offer the, uh, the most safe and secure investment solutions for clients globally, you know, preferably things that offer some kind of government-backed investor protection um, so that you'll know that your money's safe. And that's very relevant right on the heels of yesterday's webinar, which was opportunity and chaos. So a diversified portfolio that has some element, uh, element sorry, of a government backed uh, protection in the investment is really, really worthwhile. Um, so a little bit on our, our solutions and uh, we'll just talk very quickly. Um, so we do everything from uh, offshore trusts and, and pensions, help to set up offshore companies um, and investment platforms. Today, we're talking about the far right-hand box, so the use of offshore investment property uh, to grow your wealth in primary currency. But also, we're able to do things like offshore mortgages and, and lending against those kind of assets. Uh, citizenship by investment, if you're looking to change from a South African national and get a, a passport in Europe or further afield. Uh, and lastly, alternative assets. Um, so a wide range of service offering, uh, predominantly outside of borders of South Africa. Where do we have uh, presence? Well, obviously in South Africa, uh, we have four offices now. So I head up the Cape Town team, but we also have offices in uh, the Winelands. We have offices in Johannesburg and Durban. Uh, we're now also in Mauritius and recently just opening up our new Namibian office. So forward expansion in Africa is, is key, um, but also global presence in these destinations. So in Europe, uh, Cyprus, Portugal, Spain, uh, Switzerland, uh, USA now, Australia, 
Hong Kong, UK, Vietnam, Malaysia. So, so a huge swathe of, of global uh, markets, all very well regulated and something that we're very proud of is that regulation. Right, I'm going to hand over and bring in now our, our guest speakers. Uh, so today I'm very pleased to say that I'm joined uh, by Luke and Frank uh, representing uh, our, our property investment solution here. We're going to talk about yield investing. Uh, so gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today and talk us through this excellent solution. I'm very excited about this. It's probably one of the best uh, fixed income plays that I've seen for some time. So um, over to you, gents. But yeah, my name is Frank. Thank you for the introduction, Mark. Obviously, deal with Luke um, very regularly. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Yield Invest. We're a development company based in the north of England. Uh, prior to this, been working in, in the residential sector for 10 years. Prior to this, in, in Hong Kong, Dubai, and now focused very much being based in London. Um, our co-focus is really building secure income real estate investing. So prior to this, um, we were you know working in the, the private residential sector, city centre apartments. And there's a couple of issues that we kept running into over and over again. Um, one of them potentially, you know, construction delays, mortgages, lettings, whatever else. So what we wanted to do is completely solidify the income asset. So the, the projects were up and running from day one. The yield was up and running from day one. The income was coming from secure government sources via third party, very regulated operators. And the rent was coming directly to our landlords. So the UK has always been a very popular place for investment, not only because of our regulatory framework with the FCA, but social housing falls under the government umbrella for uh, accommodation. So 19% of all accommodation in the UK does fall under the social housing umbrella. That is either affordable, vulnerable adults or social housing. And it's effectively the reason why it is so secure is the, the rent is coming directly from central government. Um, so if you just go through this, um, Mark, this is obviously this Luke's presentation. So I think it'd probably be easy if you just go through this first couple of pages and then pick up where we're at. In fact, would it be easier, Mark, if I could just share my screen? Because this is going to be, we're just going to be chopping and changing. Sure thing. Okay, let me just uh, allow you to, to be host once again. There we go. Apologies for that. Um, I don't actually think I would be sharing my screen from the beginning. So with yield investing, we do call it secure income investing. And the reason really is because the rent's coming from central government. The rent is then reviewed by FCA regulated publicly listed operators that manage and manage the property for you with the tenants. And FCA regulated means that it's basically a government uh, backed entity. Uh, these property companies that we're working with are based on the stock exchange. You can buy stocks and shares in their companies. They're multi-million dollar kind of organizations. The rents are calculated at local housing authority. And then you as the landlord receive the rent. So other than it being really secure, you know, obviously that's the main benefit. But if we move into you being a landlord, uh, the people that you'll be working with are companies called Mears and Circa. So these are large organizations based in the UK. They've won the formal home office um, contract in 2019 for 1.9 billion and 1, uh, 1 billion each. And these are 10 year contracts. So they run from 2019 to 2029. Before that, it was a company called G45. And after that, there'll be another contract awarded. But these are basically contracts awarded to looking after vulnerable adults in the UK. So if you own a property in the UK, and because my business partner and I have been working in the industry now, well, he has been working in it eight years. We've built relationships with Mears and Circo and, and 10 or so other really large organizations. You'll benefit from something called an FRI lease. So what we tend to do as a company is we'll buy all of the properties. Um, we'll refurbish them to the standards of the care provider. We'll let them on a five-year FRI contract to said provider. So in this, this case, it's Mears. They won that billion pound contract in 2019. And really the benefit is it's a five-year contract. You have an assured rental tenancy turnover, uh, an assured rental from day one. So whether the property is rented or not, you have a corporate lease with Mears. So for that five-year duration, you know that you're going to be getting regular month income every month. It's the full tenant damage and maintenance cover, which is really quite interesting. So you, as an overseas landlord, there's an opportunity cost between you actually owning a hands-off investment and then having to be involved. If a tenant comes around, somehow damages the property, you're based in South Africa or wherever are, you are based in Africa. You don't want to have to be you know, weighed down with the fact that you're going to have to look after the property and pay for it. So within that, you have full tenant damage and maintenance cover, which means that they will pay for any damages. Um, so you have a complete hands-off investment. All of these properties tend to be freehold. So there's no ground rent, there's no service charge, there's no management fee. All of them are newly refurbished by our construction team in the UK, which we have 15 of us now. 
there's no management fees, there's no tenants, tenancy turnover, and you're really investing for vulnerable adults in the UK, so it's an ethical investment. So if we're looking at it as just a straight down investment case, you have the rent roll coming directly from the government. It's regulated by the FCA. These are publicly listed organizations who are taking a five year full repairs and insurance contract. So that means, like I say, there's full rental through the five years, full tenant damage and maintenance cover and no management fees. So when we're calcul calculating our income, we tend to take our gross return and we take away our costs and then we look at our net return. Your net return here is your net net return. There is no gross to net leakage. So the minimum we offer on our houses is about a 7% net return of secure government income. If we just look at an average property for us, this is one that we own in Bradford. It's a 98,000 pound three bedroom uh, free uh, hold property in, uh, like I said, in Bradford. And this is yielding 7.3% net from day one. It's a, it's a very, very simple process and transaction. We own the house. We've already put the, the lease in place. And so most of our transactions take three to four weeks in which it's just simply a transfer of ownership. You're buying the underlying asset, you're getting the land registry and you have the lease in place from day one. Here's a standard pick for us. So when we're looking at houses that we buy, you know, typically we'll buy 20, 25, um, we'll have them available at each and every month. We'll take a property that doesn't need too much refurbishment in terms of anything structural, um, but we'll put new kitchens, new flooring, new windows, no doors, new bathrooms, new boilers, new gas certificates, get everything up to the EPC register. And don't forget that you have to pass a very stringent due diligence process in order to have the relationship with the care provider. We say once you've probably been in one of our properties, you've been in all of them, they're all fairly standard. But again, you do get that five plus five year lease, which means that ongoing uh, rental role for the next 10 years. One of the things that we've moved into outside of working with Mears and Serco is we started working with specialist care providers. So with the Mears and Serco leases, they're vulnerable adults, which technically fall under the umbrella of homelessness. Now, homelessness tends to be vulnerable adults such as domestic abuse. It could be frontline workers, could be army veterans, could be anybody who fall under that. In 2017, the UK government passed the legislation where any UK citizen has the right for a place to stay each and every night. So somebody who's technically homeless could just be somebody who's lost their job. They go via local housing authority and they get awarded these houses to stay in which we purpose build for the council. We started working with providers who look after particularly vulnerable adults, potentially people with learning difficulties and whatnot. And so these providers will have local commissioner support for 25 years to house these individuals. So if we look at one of the properties that we have now, this is a 25 year lease. It's a three bedroom freehold buy to let property in Middlesbrough. It's 258,000 because you're getting 25 years secure government income for the next 25 years. And the rent roll is five and a half percent. I think perhaps what is most interesting about these units is that all of these properties, their rent roll is inflationary linked alongside CPI. So at the moment where we've seen inflation running wild in the UK, we've seen interest rates moving, we've seen dips in the stock market, we've seen shares, equities, bonds, crypto, everything looking like it's quite volatile with, you know, you know, really as a result of government fiscal policy over the last five years. What we found is pension funds and organisations moving into this market more so than ever because they're looking for secure income, they're looking for high yield, but they're also looking for an asset-backed inflationary linked asset, which they can look to ride out over the next five, six years as inflation seems to creep up. So what we're having a look at is that consumer price index is reviewed every year and typically around two to four percent. So here's our typical stock list. At the moment, these are the ones that we have up in Middlesbrough. We have a portfolio in Burnley, which is coming through another 20 units. But actually, we've recently been aggregating portfolios up to 40 to 50 million for large private equity companies that we're now working with in London. As you can see, a 25 year lease property is very well refurbished and the council has to come and give a sign off before we actually sell it. I think the most important thing to understand with the 25 year lease is you are buying secure fixed income. So this really is a fixed income asset. You are just looking for that secure income over the next 25 years against inflation, against all types of hedges. So just to reiterate the investment case, we're getting commercial FRI leases. That's who your lease is with. You don't really need to learn or worry about who the tenants are. During COVID, we had a 98% occupancy rate, higher than any of the other kind of class in the uh, the UK property market, either an industrial, commercial, residential, leisure. There's no ground rent, service charge, management fees. All the rents are inflationary linked, which means they're reviewed annually alongside CPI. On the 25 year leases, you'll be looking at a minimum 5% return. On the five year leases, you'll be looking at a minimum 7% return. And you have to remember because of the supply demand imbalances in the UK, not holistically just in social housing, but across all housing markets, there's been a million people on the waiting list for social housing since 1997. 
And that's really why we're seeing such high occupancy rates. So really what we've started doing at Yield Investing and, and what we've found most of our um, really growth due to is working with private equity companies in London because private equity companies in London are backed by pension funds. And what we've seen is there's acute supply demand imbalance for housing in the UK, as we can see a million people on the housing waiting list, circa 156,000 properties per year are needed relative to what's built and a real supply demand imbalance for pension funds to accrue government backed inflationary linked assets. The only light for life investment for this would be a bond or a government bond where we've seen the bond market move below 1% since 2010, whereas you're buying in here at a minimum of 5%. So as we move forward, we start to see a lot of private equity and large institutional investors move into this space. You know, in 2019, there was virtually no private equity in this market. As of today, there's around 3 billion a year. And that's not only in the 16 or 17 or so large private equity companies, but these major institutional investors such as Blackstone who purchased Sage Housing, they're looking to deliver 20,000 social homes in the next five years. Goldman with a 50 million pound placement, Schroeder's with 192 million pound placement. You have CBRE with a 250 million pound placement. You have Patron, you have Resonance. You have all these large organizations who are investing not only because of the secure income, but it also falls under their ESG practices. So every company has an environmental, social and governance practice where they have to chuck to benefit the what we would call ethical investment. And this very much falls under that social umbrella because the outcome for society is also very beneficial. When we're reverse engineering, this is a BBC, there was a BBC article out recently where the government spends around 12.8 billion pounds a year housing vulnerable adults in unsuitable accommodation, whether that be hotels, Airbnbs. So we have full local commissioner support from councils that we work with in West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, Manchester, the Northeast, to go out and purpose build accommodation and lease it to council providers for five to 10 years. So it's a kind of a win-win situation when we're moving through it. And if we actually look at 2017, there was a major development in this market. There are now three REITs that you can buy, publicly listed REITs on the UK Stock Exchange, which singularly purchase social housing. Triple Point, which is worth around 700 million. Civitas, you know, is over a billion now. Home Riot recently just accrued another 250 million. We're looking over 1.5 billion pounds of publicly listed social housing funds that are available for purchase. Now, the difference between what we've done and why we've launched with Holborn, specifically for their clients based overseas, is you can buy into one of these companies and get a dividend payment of around 5.25 to 5.5%, which is great, which is fine, it's secure income. What we've managed to do is the investors will actually own all of the underlying real estate investment themselves as well. So not only are we getting that five and a half, six, seven percent net return from the secure government income, much like a fund will give you, but you also own the underlying asset as well. So you will see capital growth and it is a secure investment for you to park money in and have uh, exposure to the to the pound as well. And finally, I'll just close on our final block that we've just bought in Leeds. This is an 11 unit conversion unit, um, 0.6 miles away from Leeds city centre, fully leased now on a 25 year no break clause contract, no void periods, no damages, all maintenance covered, utility council tax, free management, and again, all inflationary linked. And this price is 1.65 million. So just to reiterate, we do have a mixed portfolio between you know, lower price stocks starting at around 60,000 all the way up to 250,000, which is a five year fixed contract at about 7%. And then we've recently launched quite a lot of this new 25 year stock, which is around a five and a half percent net figure for that 25 year duration as well. You know, both of their pros and cons. Uh, the 25 year stock is, is popular with funds. The five year stock means seems to be more popular with individuals uh, just because of the purchase values. But we basically hold your hand through the entire process. Like I say, we own all the properties internally. So you're liaising directly with us. Um, and it's a really smooth process and transaction where we're just transferring the lease over and you get that rent roll from day one. So hopefully that was quite a whirlwind, quite a quick tour, um, a lot of information. But, um, you know, if you, there's any questions, you know, Mark, I'm not sure if you have um, any responses. Yeah, I'm sure we will do. Uh, sure we will do, Frank. Great. Thanks very much. If you could just um, make me host again, if you don't mind, just stop sharing the screen, then I can... Uh, Thank you very much. Okay, um, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, hopefully that was, like I say, a quick whistle stop tour on what is a fantastic uh, concept. It's one of the best things that I've seen coming across my desk in, in recent years. Um, so, so we're gonna move on to uh, questions and answers, okay? Um, you know, now is an opportunity 
to ask anything um, that you may be thinking about um, and potentially sort of understand a little bit more about where this fits in. Um, so I know a number of my uh, clients on the call today. We've also got a number of uh, people that we've been in discussions with and, and maybe some that haven't even um, physically had a chat with us. So um, just a sort of reminder that if you're thinking about this, then we'd always recommend that you, you look at this through a fully holistic um, financial plan overview um, because you know, this is a small component of you know a, a wider wealth management plan um so so where do i see this fitting in uh, potentially i see this fitting in for clients that are looking to have you know something that is and the title of the webinar gives it away safe as houses um <clears throat> you know, from a capital appreciation play uh, there's maybe some other options to consider you know around the use of, of leverage investment property and what have you but, but for someone that's coming towards the latter stages of life or one something that is really predictable, you know, I mean, it doesn't get more predictable than a, a house where you've leased it out to a government backed organization um, and they've given you a five or up to a 25 year lease. I mean, it's it's more akin to a government bond, as as you were saying there, Frank. Um, OK, so if you haven't already done so, um, please, you know, ask uh, any questions uh, online now. We'll do our best to. To answer them um so yeah let's let's get started on that front so um frank i mean i say for us to to recommend this we've done a huge amount of due diligence on the on the solution we you know we know about all the the investment funds that are buying into these solutions and you know it's great that we've now got access to some of the stock to to, to distribute directly to clients um so let's just explore um first of all you know how safe is this proposal so um so Client buys, let's say, let's say a hundred thousand pound property. I've got a hundred thousand pounds. I'm going to go and buy that investment property. Um, so first of all, correct me if I'm wrong on any of these assumptions. You know, no stamp duty. We're going to be underneath the the, the threshold pretty much. Um, and then uh, effectively, we give the keys over to the yield invest team. Um, they sign a contract with the likes of Circo, etc. Um, and then effectively, what we've got then is guaranteed income. Whether that property is empty or whether they have tenants in it, we're not interested in anymore. Um, and actually, uh, what it also means is that if they do have tenants in there that get a little bit rowdy, um, there's absolutely no maintenance cost whatsoever. They could, you know, they, they take the risk on in that regard. So it's a risk-free investment as well. Am I, am I missing anything there or is that about it's right? It's very similar. It's very similar, you know, for people who understand the commercial sector uh, and they buy into a commercial property where they'll get an eight year lease effectively this is a corporate commercial lease so mm. rather than your tenants being starbucks costa anybody of these people you would see take an eight ten year commercial lease this is simply a social housing provider so they're yeah. coming across the country taking residential accommodation and giving us a five-year fixed contract and really yeah. what they're doing from a structural perspective is they're claiming rent from local housing authority so say if they claim 100 percent of their rent here they will then mm -hmm. take a dividend of 10 percent 15 percent and they'll use that as their management fee. And then the, the investor basically gets the remaining 85, 90%. That's yep. the only thing that they take as their management, but you don't see that anyway. So that's used as their buffer to use for their management. And within that, you get the full repairs and insurance lease. So we basically have engineered and calculated based on the areas that we invest in. If you were to take this property and you were not to put an FRI lease on it as an overseas landlord, and you were to employ a management agent, you'd be playing at least 8% for the management fee. We're looking at least you know six weeks um, tenancy turnovers over a two-year pro rata basis. We're looking at least you know 25% of the rents in terms of tenancy damages and turnover and that kind of thing. So we've calculated it based on the yield of 7% net. Then actually the discrepancy between opening it on the open market and owning it with a social housing lease, there is a major difference between actually implementing this lease with the Mirza Circle. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, we've got a number of questions coming in, so we'll try and tackle them all as we go along. So, you know, if you're watching and interested, then please do ask. Um, so, I think we've kind of covered most of this, but let's just make sure that we've answered as best we can. So, what involvement is there uh, in the management of the property from the owner? Any hidden maintenance costs? Um, and again, Frank, I don't want to take words uh, from you, but but pretty much this is the most hands-off investment property solution that I've ever seen. I mean, it literally is like they hand over the keys and, mm -hmm. and you guys kind of take it from there. Is it, is it that simple? It's that simple. All you need is a UK bank account for the provider to pay your rent into. That's the yeah. only management that you need. Okay. And then, I mean, if we look at risks in other um, uh, property investments, so, you know, obviously what we find is that overseas property investors, they want something that's simple. You know, they don't want to be dealing with the, the, 
the roof caving in or the boiler going bang or anything like that. So quite often we would recommend newer build property so it's still mm -hmm. within a warranty period, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and quite often we look at things that are off plan and they can maybe grow a little bit more you know, mm -hmm. before they actually get uh, talented. Now, the risk with that is if a development goes wrong. Now, what we're saying here, these are already built, right? You've, you, you own the stock, mm -hmm. you, you've done the fit out, so mm -hmm. there is no risk in that regard. These are ready to go. Is that also a fair assumption? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all the properties have to pass a very strict due diligence process in order to be able to apply the lease. So Mears and Circo have an inspection team that go around and make sure that everything's up to criteria. So there can be no discrepancies with the boilers, there can be no discrepancies with anything with the kitchens, flooring, windows, gas certificates, insulation, everything like that. The government's yep. passing regulations where EPC, which is energy performance certificates, can't pass below a C. And so everything is up to standard when, we, when we're refurbishing these. So we've done, I think we refurbished around 250 homes last year. So we've got a very, you know, strict process, streamlined process in how we do these type of things. Yeah, and I mean, a number of my clients that are listening know that I'm, I'm a big fan of, of investment property. I've been a landlord myself for, for 20 plus years, both commercial and residential. Um, and within the family as well, we've got HMO landlords as well. So mm -hmm. now we know exactly the, the kind of uh, process that you're talking about. And, and by the sound of it, you guys handle all of that. So we're, we're effectively getting the, the nice solutions wrapped up. It's in a bow. It's ready to go. Um, and, and it's, like I say, in my opinion, it's the most hands-off investment property solution yep. I've ever seen, yeah. apart from if you own a REIT, you know, that, but that's not right. the same thing. Yeah, I mean, you simply just, trans we just transfer the ownership. So you're just mm. buying the property directly from us. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Let's move on through the questions then. So what happens if I want to sell the property? So so there's, there's two parts to this question. Let's, let's do where, is there an option to sell it with the lease in place? Mm -hmm. you know, potentially someone might want to do that. Yes. Um, and then secondly, what happens if you want to sell it at the end of the lease period? You know, uh, how do those two scenarios, Frank, let's just talk through those. So there's no break clause on the side of the landlord during the five-year contract. So the only exit, if you were to, for some reason to be coming into financial difficulty and you needed to liquidate the asset, the exit strategy would be to another investor. So mm -hmm. you will see capital appreciation. You will see an increase in your rent because rents are reviewed every year with the local council and also inflation linked. Um, but you would tend to sell in that first five years to another investor because mm -hmm. there can be no owner occupiers because the property is then leased to the care provider. At the end sure. of the five years, you do have a, an option to extend for five years or you can cancel the contract at which you then have multiple different avenues to sell the property, either okay. to owner occupiers, either as an investment, either however you want to, uh, to sell it. We do sell it for you as part of a service if you needed to sell it during the duration of the lease. Or re equally, we can sell it on the open market after the five year lease with the local estate agent who charge, you know, half a percent. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. That's that's good to know. A uh, question I've just got on uh, via WhatsApp. Chris, thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, good to see that, uh, that you're listening in. Um, so, uh, can we make these tax efficient? So, just to talk through the, the, the taxing, predominantly, obviously, from a South African's perspective, because that's the majority of the audience today. Um, first and foremost, I have to caveat all of this with, you know, if in doubt, get a, a full tax opinion. Um, if you want to know for definite, I can give you some headline guidance. Um, but uh, if in doubt, give us a call. We can we can talk through it. So so the income that's produced from investment property does count as income in South Africa. So you're going to pay income tax on it. Um, can we make it tax efficient? Uh, the short answer is yes. You know, as a number of the clients that are listening today will know, we do a number of structuring solutions. Um, so the ownership of investment property in the UK um, through things like either a special purpose vehicle or maybe even a special, a special purpose vehicle held within some kind of trust or pension structure is something that we've done uh, before. But my advice always is let's look at it on a case by case basis, because normally those solutions will have an element of fixed cost associated with them. OK, so we just need to make sure it's financially viable for you as the client before we go down that route. So to answer the question, Chris, yes, we can. You know, if you were looking to buy you know, 5, 10, 15 properties or something like that, yes, it provides a fantastic income play. Yes, we can structure that in a way where it might mitigate the, the what you would pay if you were doing it within your personal capacity. Uh, but that's something we'd need to advise on a, on a case by case basis. Okay, moving on then. Uh, next question uh, here. Uh, what's the price range for these solutions? So I think we touched on this briefly, Frank, uh, Luke, uh, but just, just a, a, a reminder of yeah, where does the price point start? Where's the top end on something like this? 
So the price points really start around 55,000 to 60,000 for one bedroom flats. Unfortunately, okay. they sell so quickly and Luke is probably the main culprit um, for having a backlog of clients. Unfortunately, the, the cheapest stock at 7% seems to go as soon as we, we launch it within the day uh, or within the two days. So we almost have to pre-launch those. We are looking at another block that we're going to subdivide into to 10 flats around 55 to 60,000. We then slightly aggregate as we go up, as we get to more and more rooms. So then we move into two and three bedroom houses, anywhere from 80 to 130, 140,000. Then when we start to move into HMOs, which is, you know, four bedroom, five bedroom plus, we'll be looking at 150 to 300,000 for those kind of properties. And then, as I said, when we're working in the 25 year lease space, which is a lower yield, but a, a stronger contract because it's 25 years and there's, there's no break clause from either side and it's direct, you know, linked uh, straight to the council. You know, you're looking at minimum buy-in there around 250,000 for those types of properties. Sure. Okay. And, and let's just talk about this is uh, quite a relevant point around uh, the next one, which is liquidity. Um, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, gents. I mean, I, I deal with the property market day in, day out, but not nearly as much as you guys do. So, so with a lot of the investment property that we do, you know, we'd recommend the, the sort of Robert Kiyosaki approach. So, mm. you know, leverage your gains. Um, mm. You know, this is a slightly different offering. This is more of an income play. And, and, and so with the price point being, um, correct me if I'm wrong, still 150,000 on average and below, that might mean that getting mortgages is not viable. It's not really yeah. going to work, but also it's not really designed for that, is it? So just give me a view on, on that. Well, yeah, certainly. I mean, as an overseas landlord, you're going to need a minimum borrowing amount, right? So anything sub 100,000 is going to be very difficult for any kind of high street bank to give you leverage on. Mm. As you've quite rightly touched upon, you are going to need to purchase around 150,000, that kind of purchase value, for a bank to want to lend you around 100,000 um, to make it viable for them to get those interest rates. But also the interest rates in the social housing space are quite high, um, purely because if you look at it from a social housing provider's perspective, if the individual who was purchasing that property was to run into financial difficulty, given the type of tenancy of the individuals who are in that house, it's not within their preference or within the bank's preference to lend on a property that could potentially see a house of three special needs or a house of vulnerable adults suddenly run into liquid or liquidation and a bank own it. And the where and all whether that property, you know, is unknown what's going to actually happen if that property can yeah. be maintained, if that property can be looked after. So just on the advice of our care providers, we tend to, well, in fact, always work in cash. It doesn't give yeah. the, the client the option to potentially refinance further down the line should they want to sell it or should they want to get out of the social housing lease. But from a provider's perspective, they don't like having uh, financing on a property. Sure. And, and you can understand exactly right. You know, that, you know, let's say if somebody mortgaged one of these properties up and then defaulted on that. Um, then the mortgage company is going to want to repossess, right? And, and yes. the last thing we, that we want is a scenario where you know vulnerable adults or, or refugees are being evicted from a property that's quite mostly owned by the government, as it were. Right. So, so yeah, I can totally understand it. So, so the way I kind of explain this, we're going to explain this to, to clients uh, in the future is you know, it's a great income play, hence the the old invest name, obviously. Um, but but yeah, you know, we we need to be is cash only, but really, it's probably the way of. Of, of presenting that, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you disagree with me on that. Yeah, correct. And like you, like we quite clearly point out, there is an element of capital appreciation. We are investing in areas where there is significant capital appreciation. Um, if you look at some of the macroeconomic fundamentals of places like West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, the Northeast Manchester, they do have those fundamentals for capital growth. And there yeah. is an element that you'd be looking for for appreciation over that five, 10 year hold. But this yep. is a primary income play. This is cash on cash. We're not looking at an ROA calculator based on leverage. We're looking yep. at a seven to eight percent fixed rate of return over a you know five to ten year period, which at the moment is pretty significantly difficult to to achieve, just given the volatility in a lot of markets. So we're we're certainly finding a lot of success with private equity companies, and, and as more retail you know investors follow suit, I'm sure. Um, Holborn have been very proactive in areas where people do want exposure to the pound. They do want exposure to the kind of right regulatory framework. They do want secure income and people do want that high yield because, you know, it's quite hard to access at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's a very valid point. I mean, you know, a lot of our clients are investing in dollars or, or euros you know, and having buying pounds at these low rates, you know, you're going to potentially get a bit of a, a currency appreciation as well. Now, we, we would never recommend making an investment choice based on, on currency risk. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're just saying is it, it maybe is a, a bit of a bonus there in, in time. Mm -hmm. um, 
But um, I just want to pick up on the point on the on the yield amount. Okay, so again, you know, typically what we find is that a lot of South Africans have gone to the UK. You know, they bought property there in the early 2000s. They spent 15, 20 years in the UK, and now they're coming back. They've got an asset in London that's appreciated significantly over time, and maybe they're coming towards the their retirement phase of life. Right mm-hmm. um, now, if they rent that property out in London. Okay, they're probably going to get. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, agents, but somewhere in the three to four percent region yield is that that, mm-hmm. that sound about right to you? Yeah, it's all relative to price, right? I mean, the rental mm. income is all relative to price, but the prices in London have just go so you know they're extortionately high. Um, yeah, just with with everything that's happened here, you'd be probably mm. right with that. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's very much focused on capital appreciation. A lot of investors will forfeit the right for cash flow for the raise mm. for the for the for the rate of speculative capital appreciation. And like you quite clearly point out, if you are in the capital appreciation game, you will be looking at a 10, 15, 25 year hold to pay off that mortgage and really, you know, reap the fruits of your labor because that's what you're in it for. If there is a client who is coming to the end of their retirement or coming to the end of their working career, they don't want to take out the 25 years of leverage. They don't want a three and a half percent yield where they're only just scratching the surface on an interest only mortgage. They want real income from day one, or they want to be able to cash flow. If I buy, so I, I ran this exercise with with my uncle who has 15 properties with us now. He's running to the end of his career. He's looking for a fixed income, and he knows that if he's getting seven thousand a year on a hundred thousand pound property, how many of these does he need per month to make sure that if he's investing half a million pounds or whatever it was, can he sustain himself on income only? Because an investment property is an investment property in your younger years, potentially to say, okay, in 50 years time, I've paid off the mortgage and here's my asset paid out, right? I've got all the cash flow and I've got all this property paid out, right? But an individual who's 50, 60 plus, they're not going to necessarily look to make no, no cash flow and singularly when they're 85 cash out, right? They're going to look for that cash flow from day one that's going to sustain themselves for, for living. Like we talked the, the Robert Kiyosaki way is mm. cash flow is king, right? We're looking for... What are we making every month that's going to sustain my lifestyle whilst living without having to work? And I really think we um, we don't shy away. We actually think that city centre apartments are a great product for people who are in that type of demographic. But certainly, you hit the nail on the head when when, a, when an individual is coming towards the end of the working career. They are looking for cash flow and they're looking for high yield and they're looking to see can this rent roll contribute to sustain my way of life whilst not working. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, let's come back to that example. And- in London, right? You've got that London property, say it's worth eight hundred thousand pounds. You've done the right thing. You've paid off your mortgage along the way, and, it, and it's yielding. I don't know. Let's say four percent. Let's give the benefit of the doubt. It's yielding four percent. Um, you've got to pay a managing agent. Okay, so it's never going to be four percent dead on. Um, you know, it's going to be a little bit less. Uh, then what happens when you have a void period? You know, yes, there's a strong demand for property at the moment, but yeah, you might have the odd month here and there that's void. Um, and then on top of that, you know, the boiler goes bang or the the ceiling here caves and you've got a load of maintenance worries or you get a tenant that can't afford to pay you, you know, you've potentially got that kind of risk. Whereas with this solution, what we're saying as an option is that if you want the, the highest yield, you could actually sell that London property, mm-hmm. go and buy a, you know, a number of properties all over uh, you know, the, the north of the UK, get 7% after all of the fees, etc. Mm-hmm. The government's going to repair it for you, going to look after it for you. You don't need to worry about whether there's people in it or not, they take care of it. I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic solution, right? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I know a lot of clients will have bought London property in 2009, 2010, 2011, and they've seen phenomenal capital appreciation, just phenomenal, you know, since 2008, since the last financial crisis, London has, you know, almost doubled. It's certainly plateaued since the Brexit vote, and we've seen capital appreciation obviously, you know, catch up in the north, but it still doesn't reprehend the, the, the catch up in rental yield because we've not really seen rents improve that dramatically in London alongside capital appreciation. So you are right in pointing out that someone's yield will still be around that three and a half, four percent, you know, sometimes gross, sometimes net. But management fees in London are 15 percent. Service charges and ground rent legislation here isn't changing too quickly. Most of it will be ground rent, 250 pounds a year. The service charges, you know, depending on the type of you know facilities that are in a building are going up incrementally. And of course, it's becoming a very unfriendly situation in the UK for buy to let landlords where specifically in COVID, if we had an individual who wasn't paying his rent, people who was on furlough, there was a lot of defaults, there's a lot of people happening. And it's a, it's a sector that is very much pinned to the economy. Now, I'm not saying buying into private residence is a bad idea, 
but you are very much depending on the economic climate at the time. When we're working strictly with social housing providers that are regulated by the government, this is a element of society that is going to need sustained support forever. It's part mm-hmm. of the social system. It's part of the dem- you know, democracy of the UK where the social services, the underbelly of society here is so paramount and so needed. I mean, we've got the NHS, we've got a very large social service sector. Your rent roll is basically assured for the government for the next five, 10, 15, 20 years in the areas that really need it the most because for the government to onboard a load of individuals who come from overseas, they're not gonna be based in London because the LHA rates to pay the rent here are so high. The demand for types of tenancy accommodation up in the north and northeast and northwest is more prevalent than ever. And so we never really see a lack of demand. And as long as that sounds as crazy as it does, there has been a million people on the waiting list for our type of accommodation since 1997. So it doesn't feel like it's affected by market conditions. It doesn't feel like it's the economy linked. It's one of these fundamental properties that is needed from the government every single day. And so I really think that's why we call it secure income and really the areas that we target allow us to get that yield, that seven, eight percent net yield. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, and as far as the, um, the way that that income um, can work, I mean, we, we were doing a, a webinar yesterday, actually, about the chaos that's going on in the stock markets at the moment mm. and where are the opportunities, right? Um, because, you know, the tech sector, you're going to have the biggest capital growth in the long term. You know, the, the technology of the future that we don't even know about will, will, will be worth you know, trillions in the years to come. Um, but it's a bumpy ride, you know, and, and so we've seen clients that have, exposure to some of those technology stocks seeing sometimes double digit drops um since the the peak which was november 2021 um so so i think uh, one of the things that there was a great story there though is that uh you know there's certain things that just always carrying on in the background you know so um some stocks like the likes of heineken and diageo you know when things are bad if we do have this recession that some people are thinking about might happen um well, people are still going to want to go and have a beer to, to drown their sorrows, perhaps. You know, if you look at Estee Lauder, you know, through the Second World War, you know, ladies didn't spend any less on lipstick um, because they wanted to go out and still look their best, even though things were, were terrible at the time. Right. 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 And what I love about this solution is it's kind of recession-proof, isn't it? Yeah. There's, there's no situation where the government, uh, or I like to think that if the UK government is defaulting, then we've probably all got bigger bigger fish to fry across the board so Completely. Uh, exactly it's linked directly to the government and is the only really regulatory risk of this is if the government was to change its output on housing over you know 15 million people that rely on it so you know it's one of these really unfortunate sectors where it became incredibly you know, it was very tenanted 98 percent during covid because 70,000 people became homeless in the first lockdown alone so in times of economic uncertainty you actually almost see a more certain asset class which is just really a sign of the times but really it's needed more than ever this type of accommodation that's really why we call it ethical investment but also secure investment because the individuals who we house really do you would be surprised about the individuals who we house in the homes you know when we would do the check-ins it's not just asylum seekers or people from you would expect out of prison it's young families it's individuals who've lost their jobs it's blue collar workers it's people that you would never have expected to end themselves in a situation where they were homeless and they needed government support so it's it's a really interesting sector to to be in but it's one of those sectors where it's going to always be needed and if not needed more in times of uncertainty yeah okay excellent I, and i think we've covered that that last question that's popped up with the the demand for these properties and you know is that likely to change i don't i don't think that's a risk with these i think if anything the demand will get stronger um you know as as the social demographic problems potentially um continue so yeah Okay, well, I think we've we've covered everything that we needed to. Thank you, everybody, very much uh, for for taking part. If you've got any uh, last burning questions, then please do ask them now. Um, but if not, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. So, um, Luke, uh, Frank, I just want to say thank you both very much for for your insight into the solution. It's been fantastic to have you both on. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, feel free to to reach out to us. The contact details will be on your screen um, at the end of this or in the comments below. um, And we look forward to speaking to you in due course. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.